Listen, I did cut the toes the other day. I did cut my oh, nails. Oh, I'm glad. I you cut, cut him. She cut the toes. I cut the toes. Let me see. No, see, look. I cut my toes. I cut them. They're scary. <laughs> They're scary. And I don't have ski and I don't have feet issues. It's the cuticles. It's the cuticles. You're cuticle obsessed. Don't do that it's with your the face. Cuticles. You look like Quasimodo. Don't do that. Here's a little little secret bit about Raven. Her favorite place to be is the bathroom. Hence this, right? She loves it. Raven's other favorite thing is to sit with no clothes on on the toilet and go ham on her cuticles. And there has been so many times when I walk by the bathroom and I, cause she also likes to leave her door open <laughs> Look, just, and we have separate bathrooms just so everyone knows because that's sees. how you keep a marriage this is together. She sees. Yeah, and she looks up like that. She'll take her glasses off. She'll have no contacts in, so she's blind. So I'm like this. So she's this close to herself. And then and she walks in, and I'm like this. Literally, she looks like a kid who just got caught eating all the Halloween candy. Comment down below, full clothed or nakey on the toilet. You literally will like come home from work, take all your clothes off, be naked, and then sit on the toilet for an hour and a half. I'm like, wait, I thought she came home from work. <laughs> I've been on the toilet. You know, they say that you're really not supposed to sit on the toilet for more than like five minutes because it's not good for your anus and whatever. <laughs> Speaking of holes, <laughs> put your hand in that hole. Oh, put it in the hole. Hold on, wait. Um. Oh no. <laughs> Which, now you have to test the wind. Oh no, I'm testing it. See which direction we're at. Where the hell, what's happening? <laughs> it's just like. You guys, ew. what are we talking about? <gasps> what is it? Aliens. Like aliens? Like aliens. Like we come in peace. You know, we're watching a show called Three Body Problems. Before you even go into a show, like, do you believe in aliens? Yes. Expand. Will do. Tell um. me more. <laughs> so my theory is this. I know automatically it's going to cause an uproar, so I'm just going to say it because I'm doubling down on it. Do that, babes. I'm here to support you. I already believe that aliens are here. There's something weird about the human. It doesn't match the rest of the animals on this planet. You think, <laughs> yeah, this is actually Raven's theory that we are the aliens. We are the aliens that came to this planet, mated with some of these animals, and then like found a way to survive on this planet. In the news, mm -hmm. I would say almost for the last year, there's been major conversation and congressional hearings about aliens appearing and people oh. seeing them and extraterrestrials and UFOs. I believe in those beings 100%. I also believe that they've been here many, many millennia beforehand. I believe that they are some of the reason we have some of the technology we have now. I read a lot of stuff. I read some David Icke and the Anunnaki and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I'm, you always talk about the Anunnaki yeah. when we talk about aliens. I don't even, can you educate me? That's a dark here's, hole. Babe. Here's That's my dark thing. Hole. This is my extent of like We alien. don't have enough time. My mom loves sci-fi. Mm -hmm. She was a huge Star Trek person. Not that that's alien, but that's just like other world. Trek. So I watched a lot of that and then Contact was like Contact. my mom's favorite movie. My favorite. But I guess like that was really the extent and I haven't really ever deep dove in into alien world. Dove in? Yeah, I haven't deep dove in. Into... I like deep dove in. And I don't know about UFOs and I don't know. I just, I don't know. And I think that seeing these like long, skinny men, creature the things. The lizard men? Yeah, like that's a real thing. We're not gonna dive into the hole. But Is for it those real? Who know, mm. I believe that there are different kinds of beings out there in the world that we personally can't see or don't know about because mm -hmm. we are not all knowing. Yeah. I'm sorry to inform the human race, but we are not all knowing. No, I, I fully agree with that. We even know that just in terms of we don't deal with our whole brain. Like we don't use exactly. our entire brain. Animals can hear certain things that we can't hear. I'll look at some reptiles and I know that goes into like dinosaur world, but some of them look so alien-like. Well, there's reptilians, which is a type of alien mm -hmm. that they talk about. And then there's more humanoid looking ones. Yeah. There's more blue looking ones. There's alien species slash vibrational yeah. beings. Oh my God, my favorite favorite alien ever was obviously E.T. E.T. I wasn't a fan. And especially the ride at Universal. <sighs> okay, I can tell. This is the difference between like a person who is in fact deeply educated and I'm like, E.T. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. No, I the love surface. it. Tell me. I loved the ride. One, it was cool. <laughs> there was a mist. It was dark. Yeah. I could be in the space. It was 4D. Was not... It was a 4D ride. I loved it. And it was old school. It wasn't scary. It was magical. You were like in the basket, mm -hmm. in the bike, going up. And then the best part was you would give your name at the front of the line. Yep. And then at the end of the ride, 
E.T. would be there and his little red finger, or his very long red finger, would come out and he would say, like, Miranda, go mm -hmm. home. Oh, <laughs> when they close that ride and, like, replace it with Transformers or whatever, I was so bummed. I'm but just bummed in general E.T. E. was, like, my favorite. That's so classic. I don't know. There's a lot of nostalgia around that. E.T. Oh, yeah. was a good one. Alex Mack, I feel like she was a little alien-ish. <gasps> I loved Alex. Um, I didn't think about that, but she could turn into a puddle. I also loved Alf. What? Alf? He was an ar an armadillo. I thought he was an alien. No, he was an anteater. Alf was an alien. It was weird. I know. I had a Alf lunchbox. You loved aliens. I have to look this up. <laughs> he, but he looked. He was had the likeness, or did he present himself to look like the? A animal? lot of aliens will present themselves for Let's our taller eyes, but at the same time, we don't know people because we put everything in our likeness because it helps us tolerate what's going on in the world. Don't get me started. I do believe that we are not the only intelligent beings in our universe. Oh my God. And for anyone who thinks that we are, you're a narcissist. <laughs> like, that is so wild. I always thought that he was like Arthur. Yeah, no. You like, know who else was an alien? Yeah. John Lithgow, Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, he so was. So good, yeah, he was very alien-like. You know who else believes in aliens? Who? Whoopi. That's auntie. I'm not, I know. I'm not even surprised. She's and you know who else is an alien? Hmm. Little Wayne. <laughs> he oh, calls he, himself an alien He all is the a time. goddamn alien. <laughs> he he is totally an alien all the time. Do you think that there's going to be a day there's going to be this like massive attack? I want to talk about that. One thing I don't like about human race <laughs> is that whenever something new happens, they automatically think the negative. They automatically think about war. They automatically Fear. think about death and, oh my God, they're going to kill us. We don't lead with love. Our darkest fears spark anger and war. And pain. also the things that we don't understand, we demonize, demonize and we respond to with fear. Immediately. Yeah. So when you ask me, do you think that they're gonna come? I have to say, well, let me not sit in my fear-based humanoid brain and let me sit in my universal vibrational being. And if there is another species that comes, I'm gonna be on my best vibrational being because I have a feeling that they'll understand that. And if I'm thinking and I'm scared, they're going to reflect that. My uncle is a vegetarian. And I remember- Cool segue. He, he's been a vegetarian. <laughs> and here's the deal. No, listen, there is connection here. And he's been a vegetarian for as long as I've known him. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time saying to him, why are you a vegetarian? And he said to me, that he believes in extraterrestrials, he mm -hmm. believes in aliens, and he believes that they've been watching us. Now, I was probably five or six when we had this conversation. Yeah, let's start there. So I was <laughs> young. Anyhow, so I said, why are you a vegetarian? And he said to me that he was a vegetarian because he believed that there were beings above us that were watching us, mm -hmm. and they were learning from us, and they were mirroring, and that if those aliens were watching us consume other animals, that when they came to this planet, they would do the same thing. Interesting. So he believed that he needed to not eat animals so the aliens wouldn't eat us. And that stuck with me for forever. And I said, okay, can I have a cheeseburger now? <laughs> what I answered is kind of the same way he's thinking, like the mirroring of it. I'm that's gonna what, that's eat, why yeah. I said, see, my segue made sense. And it was very good. I, I'm gonna still eat a cow. But you're saying that you were gonna be higher vibrationally. Yep. That's what I'm saying, that you and my mm -hmm. uncle actually shared a similar thought process of like, they're yep. observing us, they're here. Aliens have been watching us for a while, mm -hmm. I truly believe. I personally believe there was something up with the pyramids that got help from yep. other beings beings, I believe it full and wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. The other thing I do believe is that at one time they visited us on a regular basis and we were okay with it. And then something shifted in the humanoid of this earth that prevented them from coming back. Again, it's the destruction, it's the lying, it's the lower vibrational thought processes. Aliens saw that and kind of like backed away from helping us. Could it be then that the alien was actually a form of human being that over time evolved into what we know it to be. Because again, I think when people think alien, or at least when I think alien, I think this buddy. There's a lot of studies and a lot of books that talk about how a human was made on this earth from the alien person perspective. A really, really truncated version of it is a planet circled our planet. Those aliens came down mated with certain animals here, used us as slaves on this earth, and needed to mine our earth for gold and different metals because they didn't have it. And as they continued to mate with the inbred, 
it created us. And they, you know, they talk about, you know, you can't use your whole brain because it's actually coming from an alien brain, but then it was dumbed down for the animals here. Those who know, know, David Icke, go read it. We were much more in touch with our celestial beings yeah. back in the day than we are now. We have forced religion on people and the religious construct has kind of prevented us from making us like nature forward. Does that make sense? Because I also yeah. don't want to offend anybody, but it's it's really important to know that we're animals. Yeah, I mean, Earth we're not first. nature forward in the sense of how we live our lives these yeah. days. Like, I think there's a huge disconnect in the human being from just our primal senses. As a birth doula, I see that all the time with women who felt so disconnected from their bodies and had so much fear. And I was like, this is the most natural primal thing, but we have modernized almost everything in our society. So we forget that sometimes when you're feeling heated, the best thing you can do is take your shoes off and go walk outside barefoot. You know, you give yourself those three minutes, you connect to your breath, you you are an animal. I've learned so much even watching our puppy, our little baby boy Quinn, he falls down, he gets scared, he gets happy, and he's in that moment and then it's shaken off instantly. It's like there's no lingering, there's no harping, there's no insecurity, there's no questioning. It's just kind of like, motivated by instinct and being. And although we could not function that way fully, I think honoring that part of ourselves, we couldn't, we couldn't. Like we have- We can't now. I think we did at one point. I agree. Yeah. We can't now. The world has changed and evolved. Yeah. But I think still honoring and feeling connected to our inner being and primal self is important. To bring it back to aliens, it's like a good civilization has to go through stages of evolution in order to reach a higher vibrational state. When it comes to technology, we definitely know how to upgrade ourselves. Uh -huh. I mean, from look, the green, yeah. from the black screen with the green words, we don't I know think what's going to happen in 15 years. Technologically, our advancements are amazing. I think emotionally, as individual beings, we suck. We suck. So let's make a toast to a very human thing. Let's do a very human thing and make a toast. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that. Wait, before we, before you give a toast, let me just say this: take your brain out of being a human for one second, everybody. Just take your brain. Isn't this the weirdest thing? Applause. You're just making a noise over and over again to let someone feel that they did well. It's not the weirdest thing. It's you know so what? weird. No, it's not. This is probably one of the most primal things we do. We're talking in sound and rhythm and beat to relate to another how we feel. Yeah, um, I guess so. It is it's actually so weird probably, to me though sometimes. No, it's probably the, you probably just indicated unknowingly one of the most consistently primal thing that human beings still do that they don't think about. And maybe that's I why my brain- I And that's why my brain is like, that's weird, but I think you're right. So. So let's make a toast, <laughs> a very human thing. Okay, so today we are toasting to a comedian by the name of Ed Gamble. Oh, Ed, what up, Ed? A British comedian hmm. who has been doing promotion and campaigns for his new tour. He has posters around mm -hmm. United Kingdom and the tube stations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it's him wiping his face where he has a dribble of like ketchup and mustard. There okay. isn't even, he's not even actively eating a hot dog. It's just a hot dog that was on the plate. Oh. And he's been ordered to remove that hot dog and replace it with a cucumber. And it's because they don't want him promoting junk food. And his tour is called Hot Diggity Dog. He wasn't actually eating the hot dog. It's not a statement really around the hot dog at all. It's a pun on the name of the tour. But he was just like, I think it's really ridiculous because people are gonna actually think that a cucumber tastes good with mustard. But what uh, if he just put a dog on the plate? What would they think about that? What if you have like a, a actual- um, Roasted we, No, a wiener, a wiener dog. dog. Oh! A dachshund. We should have done that. That's cute. That's animal cruelty. Animal. I think it's such a stretch to think that people would see that and go, ooh, I'm gonna go eat junk food now because- No, but I'll definitely say I wanna go have a hot dog. Doesn't I mean, that look I, good? That's why I kind of stopped myself. I, I love like, a hot dog. You see a Costco hot dog and you're like, God damn, Ted's hot dogs and Buffalo are delicious. Like you guys, comment down below if you like hot dogs. Comment down below if you used to eat hot dogs with mac and cheese and ketchup. Comment down below is delicious. Mm -hmm. Comment down below if you have something that you want us to toast to. Comment down below if you had hot dogs with goldfish on top and mustard and American cheese. She's an alien. <laughs>